Hello, Emily Miller. Hey, Kay Richburg. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I am good. Happy Wednesday. We made it halfway through the week. Huh. <sighs> I'm telling you, I am I still know. recovering from Cynthia's amazing visit. We had <laughs> such a good time. It looked like um, you guys were having a lot of fun. We had a lot of fun. We have so many great plans coming down the pike that you're going to love. Oh, um, a couple of things I wanted to say before we got started was a big hi and hello to Janice is over on YouTube with our buddy Christine is over there. And then hi, hi, Christine. today is our dear friend Gita, her birthday today. <gasps> it is not. It's it is. It's Gita's special day. So a big happy birthday to our dear friend Gita. She's been, she started a new job. She's traveling. She's doing all kinds of stuff. So she isn't always, um, she isn't as quite as available uh, all the time, um, but she is, uh, uh, she may or may not jump on, but I know she always watches them after the fact. We love you, Gita. We love, uh, we love that it's your birthday and we wanted to wish you a very, very happy birthday across happy returns of the, day. the miles. Oh, there she is. There she is. Hey. Yes. She's been so super busy. Gita, we love you and we love that you're busy and, and all of those great things. So happy, happy birthday to our dear friend, Gita Larson. So happy, happy birthday. Um, Okay. So, oh my goodness, Emily, this was a throwback, right? <laughs> I've a had this, bit. I really have had this on the brain for a long time. Yes. And it, it, it did take a little, I needed to give myself a little nudge to go kind of down the rabbit hole and do the research for this. Um, it's, a, it's something that I think everybody who ever went to camp probably learned. And I went to horseback riding camp, so I didn't learn... How to do this camp? Oh, yeah, I didn't go to camp. My whole life was kind of camp. Well, mine was too, but I had a yeah. I had a special love for horseback riding, and so I yes. I finagled my way into camp one summer and smart. Never looked back. I just loved it so much and became a horse right. girl from then on out. You know, yeah. all my friends were horse. All my friends had horses out in the country. Yeah, we had chickens. Yeah. <laughs> so. This daisy chain, I think, is super charming. You are going to show, um, you've got a great handout that goes with it. Yeah. Um, you're going to show. Chart. Um, the what? With a new chart. With a new chart. Emily's yeah. chart. Super exciting. Um, yeah. We're also, um, Emily and I were chatting earlier. Her peyote stitch series for our YouTube is just about done. We've got a couple more things to put the finishing uh, polish on it. And then you folks will see, start to see Emily's basics coming up, um, coming up soon. So we hope to launch those in June. We've got some other great stuff launching in June. Um, you email if there's a, pay, a, a seed bead stitch you're really, really interested in or put something up on the Facebook group. Yeah. Um, it's, it, I have learned, I've been doing peyote and brick stitch since 1992. Right. So we're back there, 93. And I learned stuff by really focusing down on this. And it was, I actually, yesterday I learned something that was kind of blew my mind a little bit and it was so interesting. And, and, um, I, I'm dying to share it all with you, but I, I, I just, I think we never stop learning and I think it's great to take another kind of focused look on something. And I, I, Kate, I love this idea that we're doing these shorts because I love the chit chat. You love the chit chat. We love to reconnect over the internet, never right. all that stuff, but this focusing on these one particular focus thing learning. Yeah. Is I think it's, it's genius and it's going to yeah. make, I think everybody's going to be surprised when they kind of sit down to kind of put this together and do their, do their little samples and do some little swatches of things that um, there's a lot of learning is different. It's yeah. different than, than a big project. So, yeah. So I think you folks will really, really love it for sure. And Emily has some cool samples, some cool stuff to happen. 
um, in those shorts. So we're really excited for them. I also wanted to let you folks know for next week, I'm starting a new series. Um, it's called Master Class with Kate. Uh, so stay tuned to your emails uh, for more details on that. But it's going to be a once a month uh, project, an ongoing project. And it's really going to focus on a lot of um, that kind of traditional stringing that Janice and I, and I know Emily, you've done that kind of old school multi-strand. We're going to use threads, nylon threads, silk threads. Um, we're going to do all of that, what we call the Helen Dietz style um, stringing. Oh, you know, I know I was at a show, I was at a, my fiber guild, we went to a, a fashion show. It was pretty fun. If you watch my Insta, you'll see it. Um, and there was a lady there who was selling her jewelry and she was from Berkeley. And she had this necklace that was hanging on her stuff. And hands down, 100% was Helen Dietz style. And for those of you who aren't familiar, Helen was a uh, an instructor here in the Bay Area. Mm -hmm. She lived in Berkeley. Her whole house was a classroom. She didn't cook. She kept beads in her oven. She was a diminutive little lady under five feet tall, maybe under 4'11", maybe. Um, and she made these necklaces that were statements. Sculptures. And Sculptures, multiple strands and tied and encrusted, encrusted and a centerpiece and this, and then a counterweight on the back. And what she would tell you is she would say, because people would say, oh, Helen, you're so, you make such big necklaces and you're such a little lady. And she would say, you wear the necklaces, the necklaces don't wear you. So, you know, so I saw in this woman's booth and I said, is that a Helen Deet style necklace? And she looked at me and she <laughs> said, yeah, how do you get? So we connected over like this learning. So I think the Oakland Museum now has her oeuvre and um, our buddy, Julie, um, who used to actually work with us at Bead Shop, I think she is the curator of, of that. So hopefully we'll see that come to light again someday. Um, but my master class, uh, really is dedicated to Helen Dietz and to Janice, um, uh, in the, the, the styles of just a big statement necklace. So that's going to start next week. Uh, I'm going to have a materials list up. It's going to be an ongoing project that I keep listing things and who knows this project, this master class may go on for six months. We'll see what happens, but I'm really, really excited next week. I'm going to talk to you about thread needles, picking your beads. We're going to take a walk down memory lane with some of my pieces. Um, and we're just going to jump in. So every month, every, I think, first broadcast of the month is going to be the masterclass. So I'm excited. I was just looking through my boxes of findings yesterday, Kate, mm -hmm. and I have a ton of multiple strand clasps from Jess Imports, yeah. from... Um, Bobbles and Beads back Bobbles in the day beads, when we used to carry them. Uh, Pacific Silverworks, who's gone out of business. Yeah. Um, Lana. All these, yeah. all these people that, and I, it, it was a little walk down memory lane, but looking at all these beautiful clasps with all the tiny granulation on them and, yeah, you know, just really beautiful strands or something that it's wide. And it's just, yeah. it was just so much fun. We'll have to, yeah. I'll have to get them out uh, when yeah. we talk. About them and we yeah. Talk. That'll be fun. I really think that, you know, not only are we looking back on fond memories of the bead world, but we're making some new fond memories as well. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'm excited to really drill down deep, literally, um, with some of these, uh, with some of these processes. So what I'm going to do is they're all going to live on one playlist uh, over, they'll live on our website on beadshop.com, but they'll also live on a playlist on YouTube. So even if you drop in like mid masterclass, they're all going to be in order and dated. Um, there'll be every, things in the comments, all of that. So they will be kind of like a mini class. they will be up there for you. So Sounds I'm so super cool. excited. Yeah. I'm really, really excited. And then once this one concludes, we'll see what next big Epic project I'm going to tackle, but it'll be fun. Well, speaking of Epic projects, Emily, let's get your, 
um, your seed beads up and running. Um, gosh, it's great. We have so many people watching Emily and everyone's so glad. They're really excited for this. You know, the comments are a little out of my focal range, so I really have to- I understand. I'm like, glasses on, glasses off, glasses on. I don't know. And you know what? I really don't have time to look at the comments while I'm doing this anyway. <laughs> yes. Like, Kate's a little bit better at, at the um, rubbing her head and patting her tummy situation, <laughs> but I am not yet there. <laughs> yes. Um, so, uh, Emily, I'm going to pass it over to you. I'm going to highlight your screen. I'm sure. going to mute myself for just a second because I have to grab something. Okay. Um, but uh, you folks can find the handout over on beadshop.com. We've got all the listing for Emily, and uh, we'll show you that a little bit later. But I will go ahead, and there you are, Em. You. Yep. Sorry. Are, are the new boards up yet? No, we're testing these new boards uh, to see if we love them. Um, I and love them. Yeah, folks, you can see that new bead board that Emily has in front of you. I also have one that I'm testing out. It's this one. Um, and if you're interested, we kind of love them. So we think yeah. mine is a bigger one like this, and Emily has the round one. Yeah. Um, and it's kind of that traditional kind of bead board with the bumpers around it. Um, they're not going to be cheap. Boards like this just aren't inexpensive. No, there's a lot of work. Um, so. Yeah, a lot of work uh, goes uh, into them. But it's a nice surface. So let us know if you love yeah. them. And then uh, I'm glad to see you're using it, Emily. I'm excited to see oh, it. You know, I really like it a lot. And I got to tell you, I think one of the things that I like most is that the, the bumper is dark. And mm -hmm. I know this is going to get dirty over time. Right. And it may, you may as well make the place that where I'm going to touch it the most dark colored. <laughs> so, right. Right. Was and you know, I was thinking. I found that this stuff actually cleans up pretty well. Cause I have another one oh, that good. got pretty. Mm, Funky. And I just kind of, you know, I've, I've heard people say uh, like a wet wipe kind of situation, yeah. a baby wipe or a, yeah. a, a you know, um, uh, not alcohol wipe, but the mm -hmm. antibacterial kind of wipes that are part of our ubiquity life now. For, right. That's um, right. Okay. Right. Do it. Okay. Hey. Here you go. Solo. Oh. You are. Hi, it. Guys. Oh, it's nice to be back. It really is. It's <clears> great <throat> to have you. I have to say this, um, this Daisy chain uh, pattern and uh, project has really been in my brain for a long time. And sometimes it takes a little nudge to kind of get me going. And I, I kind of don't know what my nudge was other than it was spring and I was seeing so many flowers. Um, I'm kind of new in my neighborhood, but now I've figured out the neighbor to watch to learn when to plant stuff. <laughs> so I have this one neighbor who has a beautiful yard and they have all kinds of amazing flowers. And this was, um, I just noticed now that I have to watch their yard and when they plant things, I got to go to the to the nursery and get some plants and put them in my yard as well. Uh, but Daisy Chain is really, it's a classic. It's one that's been around for a very, very long time. And there's a bunch of different ways to do it. I did kind of go down the rabbit hole a little bit looking for different Daisy Chain patterns. I found this one inspirational photo um, on the internet, which so none of this is my work. This was just something I thought was, was cool. And I liked Oh, some of these, and I like some of the things about them, but really what was sort of attractive to me was this one that didn't have the real um, uniform edges. I really liked this effect of having those really, those flowers be sort of separate. So I started looking around and looking at different techniques and, you know, I, I didn't really see one that I loved. And so I, I played around a little bit with um, adding some 3D, more 3D leaves, and I came up with this guy. And so I really thought that the for the for a ring, it's simpler without the extra leaves, but you just slide this guy on and it's this cutest little ring for yourself or for a friend. Might be something like you'd be sitting at a picnic and you'd be playing around with. But um, you know, the throwback to the 60s, and I think the hippie days in the summertime always kind of has that effect. I thought this dimensional um piece was really a lot of fun. But I am going to start, start out with showing you how to do the simple daisy chain. And then the groovy necklace um, is like just a little tweak that kind of, I think kind of makes all the difference. I did pick out a really broad range of flower kind of colors. And I really just thought about flowers that I liked and, you know, poppies and roses and um, 
uh, uh, like little blue pansies and California poppies and violets and just any kind of our colors that you think are kind of fun. You know, um, green for the leaves and you could do a couple of different greens if you wanted. That's certainly fine. The um, This particular green is just a nice kind of bright leafy green. Now I did this as a as a classic daisy, but it would be really cute as a black eyed Susan. So you could use a black um, size eight in here and yellow beads for around the edge. It would be real cute. Black eyed Susan is the state flower of Maryland. Um, and so I know that would be a really, a really fun one to do or a sunflower, you know, we could do kind of a, um, a yellow, uh, outline and a brownish middle that would kind of give us that sunflower effect. But I did like all of these really lovely sort of, um, saturated flower colors. I did mix matte and shiny beads because I can, and I like that look. So, um, we're going to dive on in. I also made a little bracelet. And I used one of our little magnetic clasps, which I thought was kind of a flower effect. So you could certainly uh, get on board with that too. Oh, I like that, Emily. That's a great use of that clasp. Yeah. You know, it's for this little bracelet, it's sort of lightweight. So um, I think, I think learning from my uh, trials and errors always, I think if I was going to do this again, I would do it as a multi-strand bracelet. Um, I would try and find a multi-strand clasp because look how cute this looks. Yeah, that is layer cute. Layer on a yeah. few layers of that. That's a nice daisy chain too. Doesn't That's that really look cute. cute like that? Yeah. I think as a bracelet, that would just be super cute to wear. So let me slide these guys off and dive on into um, doing this particular little stitch. So <clears throat> this is really based on right angle weave. And right angle weave means that our beads sort of go around in a circle or a square. If you want to think of each of the uh, beads as a spot on the compass. Um, I know we use that a lot for uh, talking about kumihimo. And I think it works well also with right angle weave because it kind of gives us that north, south, east, west effect is, is pretty easy to understand. And it's easy to orient yourself to as well. So I did a chart, which is at the back of the handout. Um, and of course I did this with Daisy colors, but you can change these to any color you like, just print it in black and white and then color them in if you want. And as we move down this chart, you'll notice that the green color changes. And that's really just to show where those green colors get added on. So if you want to change the color, you can, but I made it all in one color on my sample. So really the start of this is to start with three 11s and an eight. And I usually pick up um, an 11 and eight and two more 11s because my thread is gonna then go through all these beads that one time and then a second time. And that'll pull those beads up into um, a little circle or square because there's my north, south, east, west walls. And once I get this one made, I'm gonna make a second one. And this is the, the situation where right angle weave kind of comes into play. So we went around all these beads and then using that north bead now becomes the south bead. I'm going to pick up three more 11s and circle around again. And right angle weave is kind of interesting. You know, it, you, you're going to go through the beads a lot of times. And I talk about this a little bit in the shorts when I'm talking about peyote stitch. Part of the tension that you build up here is, filling up the holes with thread and the tighter you fill those holes up the stiffer and firmer this all becomes but with right angle weave you're going to go through each bead minimum of two times probably up to four so i add that second round so i've got kind of a figure eight of thread the thread is actually kind of crisscrossing inside that eight and that's perfectly fine generally the rules of right angle weave is we don't go across the intersection straight this way we turn a corner every time we go through the beads, right? Rather than going across straight. But, you know, I'm, I'm, all, I'm all into breaking the rules. <laughs> if this was our original grouping and this was our second grouping, how did these two beads get put in? I broke the rules of right angle weave. It's okay to break the rules. Um, I circled Rebel. around the second time. And then I passed through adding two beads and came right around 
and added two more to kind of fill out my daisy. Now, the interesting thing here too, is if you wanted to get really fancy with your daisies, you could actually change these petal colors. So the petals could be all different colors. They could be alternating, they could be shaded. You could do a bunch of different detail work in here. In fact, a little strand of these, maybe like three or four flowers in a row would make a super cute little earring, little drop earring. So the next stage then is to build um, the leaf portion. And that leaf portion is going to also revert right back to right angle weave. And as we're building the leaf portion, we're actually starting the very next daisy. Okay. So if I added these two beads here, those were my last two added. My thread's coming out. I'm going to continue up to that very tippy top north bead now. And I'm going to add three more beads. So this middle bead becomes the south bead of the next daisy. So if you're going to change colors, this is the point where you're going to change that color. Okay. So you're going to pick up either a different color or the same color. And I'm going to start off with the, the white daisy. So you'll actually be able to see what that looks like. And Emily, um, yeah. if you have, uh, there you go, a little more in frame. Perfect. And if you have, so that center bead, just to confirm, is a six. I mean, the eight. center, eight. That, that one there. And then the ones, oh, an eight. And then the ones around it are 11s. Got yeah. it. Okay. Yeah. So one of the things I tend to do with charts is I'd leave them a little bit blank. Um, it gets a little bit too busy with too many numbers and too many lines. You can draw in your own. Okay. If you want to follow the directions and walk yourself through the chart, that's ideal. You know, sit down, say, oh, step one says do this. There's the picture. Step two says do this. Okay, there I'm going to do that step. Step three. And you can teach yourself easily. I do find also, and this is kind of getting off track for today's adventure, but in general, if you teach yourself how to do a stitch from a diagram or from directions once, the next one that you learn will be much easier. So stick with one until you feel real comfortable with it and then move on to that next one. And you'll you'll find that there's so many related parts to this that you'll you'll pick up that next one even faster. So our next step is to add, if we want, add beads on the outside to make the leaf. But I'm gonna wait, I'm gonna hold on that one until I get to that point with my actual beads. Okay. Okay. I decided to use Fireline for this particular adventure. You know, I like Fireline. It's it's a little wiry. It's not as flexible and drapey. That's okay in this situation because we're actually looking for it to build, help us build a little bit of firmness and stiffness so those daisies sort of stay in place. Um, and it's small enough, the number four, four pound is small enough that we can absolutely pass through our beads as many times as we really need to. And it fits on a size 12 needle. Now, don't be afraid of a size 12 needle. If you find that you're really, really struggling threading it, go back and pull up a 10 needle. You'll be able to take that 10 through a lot of different places and it will work fine for you on most things. And when you feel a little more comfortable with threading that needle and it gets easier for you, then I would absolutely move myself over to a 12. I do find the 12s really have a kind of a more universal use um, and they work in most situations. You know, these boards are great because you can absolutely stick a needle in it and it stays in place. And there's spots, you can stick it on the padded edge. Oh my God, I can't wait for you guys to, to try these out because they really are the greatest. So I'm gonna grab some beads and I have my little volcanoes laid out here. Smaller volcanoes because I don't need quite so many. But if I was doing this for myself down the road, I'd have bigger piles. And I did lay them out in the line, which truth be told, I never am that tidy when I'm doing something for myself. So, so I'm going to start with an 11, an 8, two more 11s, four beads. Always take the moment to look at this on your needle and thread. Make sure before you start to stitch that those are the beads that you want. I can't say that often enough. And since um, right angle weave is gonna wrap around on itself, I don't need to use a stopper bead because these beads are gonna become the stopper bead. So I'm gonna circle around, my thread's gonna go through those beads again in the same direction. And I'm gonna pull it up. So <clears throat> another thing to think about is how much of a tail do I need to leave here of thread? 
You know, I would leave enough thread as the tail that I could easily slip it on a needle and bury the tail. All right, and, and, and end off the thread. So here's my first little portion of my daisy. And really, again, with seed beads, the first stitch or two that you take, it's gonna be super floppy and not stay together very well. But with right angle weave, because we're gonna pass through it again, I'm gonna go all the way around the circle again, things are gonna get much tidier, tighter, and firmer real fast. You could also use a little beeswax if you find that this is your constant bugaboo. You know, the thing that makes you crazy is that things are kind of loose and goosey and you are frustrated by that. Pull through again. And I'm going to emerge from that number eight bead. Okay. So I cut a fairly short piece of thread here uh, because we're doing a demo and I bang into my camera if my thread's too long. But you can start with a piece that's about a yard and a half long. That's plenty to work with. And you'll have to change your thread multiple times in this project. Now, I have my north, south, east, west. Everything looks a little crooked. That's okay. It'll straighten up a little bit better as we go along. I'm going to grab three more beads. So with right angle weave, you're using one existing bead in your pattern as one side or one wall. And then you're going to add either three or sometimes two with traditional right angle weave. It just depends on where you are in the pattern. Okay. So I'm going to go through the eight again, circling around, same direction, and pull that up. So now here's my daisy beginning to form. And I'm going to pass through it again. So it's got two threads through it, through the eight. And now to set myself up to add the beads along the side of the daisy, right in these little gaps, I need to go through those three beads again. So pop my needle right back through. Sometimes you can't get them all three at once, and that's all right. And I'm gonna add two more beads now. So this is where we break the rules of right angle weave, okay? This is the step. Don't tell anyone that I'm telling you guys to break the rules, okay? I'm gonna take two beads, I'm gonna go down. So I'm coming out right now, I'm coming out right where my tail of thread is, and I'm gonna pass through all three of those lower three beads. Oh, that was a good one, I've never reached through the loop of the thread before. Hmm. And add two more beads and go through two beads here. I'm aiming to come out of that north bead, that topmost or middle bead on the daisy, right? One daisy ready-made. Look how cute that is. It happens so fast. So to add the leaves, I'm gonna so pick cute. Go, Kate. So cute, so cute. Go for Kate. One leaf bead, one flower bead. Now this white bead I'm adding now is the bead at the bottom of the next flower, right? And I'm gonna go right back to right angle weave using this bead as my south bead now. These guys loop around, ah, leaves. I'm gonna pass through all of these beads one more time. And again, come out at the top, heading left or right out of that north bead. You got any questions for me, Kate? Mm, I have a couple here. Okay, shoot. Um, that so, way I can literally look at that little guy for just yeah. a Yeah, so you're um, using uh, Fireline. Mm -hmm. And so are Fireline and Wildfire about the same? Yes. Mm -hmm. They're the same product, oh, just different brands. Yeah, they're, these are, uh, <clears throat> this is a crossover thread from the fishing industry. And it's a monofilament, which means it's a spun thread. So sort of like a spider makes a, a thread. <clears throat> and then those fibers are actually braided. So, you know, if you think about uh, kumihimo or a shoelace as a braid, 
this is the same kind of braid. Very fine though. I do like the abrasion resistance very much of Fireline type threads. So if you're working with metal beads or crystals or uh, gemstone beads, you want to do add them into some uh, bead weaving. Fireline's a great choice. Really works really well. Um, then there's another question here. <clears throat> I'm scrolling, I'm scrolling. Uh, so what thread can be used with, with a size 13 needle? We can use KO with a 13. KO, the oh, Sono. The Sono. Um, mm -hmm. I don't think you're going to be able to get the fire line through a 13. It might be a little small. Yeah. It's going to be very tight. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, if, you can, if you can come up with a Nymo O, Ot, Zero. Mm -hmm. um, or. I don't know if Eslon or Ceylon, one of those guys, makes a zero. Mm -hmm. it, back in the day, but, yeah, Nymo but, was the, was Nymo. the, was the right. thread of choice. The kind of go-to. The came at about four different sizes. D was the largest. O was the smaller size. Uh, no, B. D, B, O. And then they had like triple O or double O. Really, really fine. Right. So... Um, and I think that is it. Can you, um, I'm trying to see. So, uh, there we go. Perfect. Raise just a touch so we can see that. So now you're going to go to your next. I'm going to make another, I'm going to make another couple flowers here. I thought, okay. and then I'll go and do the multicolor one. And you okay. Can see how that and then the multicolored one, the leaf is a little different. Is that yes. right? Okay. Yes. Let me bring so it up. This... We're doing our simple leaf and you can see, you can kind of see where Emily's headed with mm. that other one. Yeah. Cool. So <clears throat> I thought that this particular style of flower was a little more appropriate for a ring or a bracelet. It's a little less catchy. Mm -hmm. um, when I say catchy, you know, catches in your hair, catches on loose fibers on your clothing. Eh, rings and bracelets tend to kind of move around a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Um, so I would, I would kind of stick with that style for those particular positions. I mean, feel free to do your own. You do you as our fearless leader likes to say. <laughs> um, but I do think on the rings and bracelets, these simple leaves kind of make a little bit more sense. Mm -hmm. but your choice, Peter's choice. Okay. Very pretty. So now that I have one bead here that I'm going to base my group of next right angle weave beads on, things change a little bit. I don't need to add quite so many 11s and I need to add my 11s and 8s in a different order. So I'm going to pick up one 11, one 8, one more 11, and I'm going to circle around, right, passing through, making that what was a north bead now becomes a south bead. And there's the beginning of that next flower. Oh, great. And can you lift it just a little closer, Em? And so Emily's using, like we said, the uh, 11 aughts and the 8 aught is in the middle. Mm -hmm. Emily, could you um, size up to a 6 in the middle and 8s around? You could. Mm -hmm. I would also size up and thread if I was going to do that. Okay. So one of the things about sizing up to bigger beads is the whole gets immensely different. And the flexibility and the drapeability and the ability to hold some tension also changes. So okay. I would move up to a bigger thread and that would just be the six pound fire line. Mm -hmm. And then a size 10 needle would be most appropriate. Mm -hmm. um, and, and continue on from there. I think it's interesting to play with those bigger beads. Um, sixes in particular, begin to have such a large hole that they don't hold their shape or hold the the positions in sort of the same way. And that was one of the things I kind of came up, came to grasp a little bit even more firmly while I was doing some of our little shorts. Size six beads are, they're really kind of passing out of si seed bead range. Um, right. And I think I need to come up with a combination of needle and thread that, would work a little bit more proportionally like this does with the smaller mm -hmm. beads. I do think though, for most learning, 
A size 11 bead is fine. Mm -hmm. It's not so small, surprisingly, when you compare it to a 15 or one of those 13 Charlottes. A size, a size 11 is not as small as you think. Um, right. And it has a, a good sized hole, but as you begin to fill that hole up, again, things get more stable and, and have a better and more consistent tension. For our tiny bead fans, people are asking, can you size down? So could you do this with the 15s and the 13s? I would certainly do it with the 15s. I think you would struggle a little bit with the 13s. Okay. But so I you would, would definitely do, do it with 15s and then I have an 11 in the 11 center. in the middle. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. And you know, I didn't, I didn't get a chance to do the Black Eyed Susan, but um, I think they would be super, super sweet with uh, a black center and yellow beads around the outside. Yeah, no, I think it would be great. And I, I do have some, I do have our 15s here. So maybe I'll, I'll oh, yes. uh, take a look and see, or even our 13s, our Charlottes and just see, play around. Cause it would be really pretty to do a little delicate piece like that too. Yep. And you know, this would be kind of a fun um, hat band on a straw hat. Oh, definitely. Wouldn't that be cute? Very so nice. I'm circling around here, doing the same stitches that I did before, and I'm ready to add those two beads on the side. So I'm going to pick up two more 11s. One of the things that's interesting about right angle weave is kind of the direction of your needle and thread. As you do this circling around process, you'll notice that the circle changes from a a uh, clockwise to a counterclockwise circle. So mm -hmm. on my last daisy, I was circling around this direction. And on this daisy, I'm circling around this one. So if that's happening to you, if you notice it, you're doing the right thing. You're fine. Nice. Right? It's good to know when you're on the right track. I just, I get just get the sweets on this. I just love it. Yeah, it's really cute. And, you know, I think the way that you've elevated it a bit, um, especially, I'm really excited to see oh, that one see that has... I made, you guys? The what? I made a mistake. Oh, perfect. I so love that. I part. actually used um, two whites and a green where I should have used two greens and a white. Oh, well. Yeah, it's not such a big deal. And see how Emily is taking it out? I took my needle off. She's not doubling you know, back. that. That's definitely a, um, it's definitely something that we all have to kind of experience for ourselves is making a little mistake and what do you do to fix it? Um, you know, backing the needle out um, tip first or going through the beads again, tip first to try and undo your error. It, it can, it can make it worse. Sometimes it, you can get lucky. It always makes it worse for me. Always. Mm, you know, I, I would say that maybe 30% of the time I get away with it. Yeah. <laughs> One yeah. out of three times I get away with it. Yeah. And those I, other two, it just takes, it takes more time to untangle the mess that I made than to actually take the needle and thread off and rethread and take the beads off and rethread the needle. 100%. It, it's really, uh, it's kind of not worth it. I don't know. You know, if, if somebody who does this for their living <laughs> tells you it doesn't work very well, I think you can go with that. You know, yeah, I believe and I've been around the block enough times that, um, you know, you can, uh, you can kind of spot it, right? Yes. All right. Let's make one more daisy and we'll walk through very carefully on this one. Oh my goodness. I've got a mess of beads already here. So again, this is a daisy on the established, not the first one, but the established pattern. Right. I need a 11, an 8, and an 11. <clears throat> I'm going to use that bead that I established there between the leaves. That's my now a south bead. It was a north bead. Now it's a south bead. And I'm going to circle around again. And this eight is really doing yeoman service here. It's allowing us to pass through lots of times. Right up. So I need three beads again. This is traditional classic right angle weave stuff. We've done right angle weave in the past, but we've never done it with one bead on a side. We did it with multiple mm -hmm. beads on a side. 
Yeah, it looked nice. It was the the bracelet that you made. Mm -hmm. I think that, I think it's actually easier to learn it with multiple beads on the side. It's just a little clearer to see. Mm -hmm. But I don't think um, I don't think that everybody loves doing it that way. I think they like the look of this very small. And it's super right angle weave is a slow stitch. It yeah, it's so quickly because you keep backing. Back, yeah, going you around and around. One step back, yeah. And it makes a, it makes beautiful fabric. There's no doubt in my mind. So beads. Yep. With the size 13s, um, we would use the size 13 needles, correct? I would use a 13 needle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, agreed. Because those 13s, they're small. So the size 13 needle is pretty small. Yep. Um, you just have to size everything down. Yep. And it would look darling. The Charlottes would look really darling mm -hmm. for this. They have a little bit of that sparkle. Ugh. Charlotte's and so what Allie did with her Charlotte's um, yes those fringe great. earrings I want them I'm gonna yeah, make some for me. Did a great job yeah so pretty if you're on the bead table Allie this morning just posted a really beautiful um yeah. project that she did with the tiara cast drops and Charlotte's cascading down um yeah, to really make friends. yeah really exquisite so um You'll just continue that on, um, right? And right. So let me just let me just say one thing here as we're getting sure. to finishing this into a ring. I literally sized this around my finger in per, in in place. I didn't use a ring sizer or any kind of a mandrel or anything like that. Um, mm -hmm. So when you kind of get to the point where you're going to finish this off, when you go to join it into that ring you won't need to use this north bead right because down here you'll have a north bead right so right as this circles around you're only going to end up adding these two sides right these two east and west beads so you wouldn't actually need another bead down here at the bottom so when you go to join it and you know you're going to have to you may have to Cinderella this around on different fingers to get the right finger for this situation. This bead at the bottom that was was our, our very original south bead will be joined up using just two of those flower beads. Or two and that will become that becomes a north bead. Yep. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay. Gotcha. So let me move on to the multicolors and I will also do the fancier um, leaf version. So back to my little chart here, when I've completed this cycle and I'm, I moved around and I've put my new flower bead on and my two leaf beads, I'm actually going to circle around. And when I get to coming out of one of those leaf beads, I'm going to right angle again. So I'm going to move out, add three beads. I'm going to go through twice, mm. right? And then mm -hmm. I'm gonna, I, I, depending on which way my needle's going, I'm actually gonna just work my way over to this side and add the beads on the other side. So pick up three, circle around, and I'll have to dip down and back up and work myself back up into that flower bead. So it's two little quick step, extra steps, which I think makes a ton of difference. I think it adds in just a really cool new effect. I so really do too. Done. I love those leaves. I love we them. Love the leaves. You know, we could go bigger on these leaves. We could do yeah. more things here if we wanted to. Um, I mean, you could add a a different colored green. You could add a little black bead. Would be kind of fun in here, maybe on the on one of these outside tips or mm -hmm. yeah. You know, there's just a host of things that you could try. Um, so that that north bead. This was where we added the first group of our flowers our leaves and then we added the side leaves right worked our way around added the side leaves so this guy hanging out up here is still once north now south bead to work into that new flower so it's really the same with a couple added steps all right and i would remember to do the same thing um on this one the same amount of thread about a yard and a half a uh, fire line, 
And I did choose white Fireline, you know, with this darker uh, palette. I probably could have gone to the gray Fireline. Mm -hmm. One of my epiphanies um, yesterday, working on our shorts, was uh, how big a difference thread color makes in bead weaving. I have always talked about that in sort of knowing terms, and I've always done it myself, um, chosen a thread color, knowing that it impacts how the beads look. Right. But I did something yesterday, and boy, was it the perfect, absolutely perfect illustration for this. Oh, that's awesome. So um, it, 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 like I said, it was something that I knew kind of viscerally, but I don't think I'd, I don't think I'd ever done it before. And I really wish that some early on bead weaving teacher had said, okay, everybody's going to get some beads out and this is what we're going to do. And she would have done it with real purpose because that would have instructed me on how to do this and what a difference it made. So the handout, someone's asking about the handout as well. Yeah. You can find it right on the, uh, right on beadshop.com. It's the, um, the project uh, is right on our homepage right now. Um, the and the, is the, I'm sorry, the ring is called Posey. Posey. Yes, yes why. Right. Mm -hmm. And the necklace is called Groovy. Groovy, that's right. So right. you'll find them uh, under Daisy Chain. Yep. So here's the project map laying this guy out. I have to tell you, I did not pattern these flowers. In fact, I tried not to pattern them. I just wanted them to be mixed up like my neighbor's yard, who's got really right. flowers. <laughs> and it's kind of a mishmash. Everywhere is different. Um, and so I was looking for that same kind of uh, naturalistic, um, there's a term for it, the gardening world. And I think it's called chaos gardening, where you mix all your plant seeds together, your flower seeds together, and then you sew them so you don't know what you're going to get next to itself. And right. it's kind of a great, it's a great thought. Um, I know that as bead weaving folks, we tend to follow patterns a lot. I don't in my own work, but I know that people who are big into seed beads um, and big into doing geometrics and real heavy duty uh, multi-layered things, they're big into following patterns. So I don't do that. It's just my own personal thing you know and i laid these beads out in a little pattern a little a little palette but you do you you know um these centers could also might also be really fun in a white or cream mm -hmm. not bright yellow um although or black i think might be kind of fun as a center or you could alternate the colors in the centers if you want you know that would also be a, a fun look um i i just thought this this satisfied my eye so much and so well i just had so much fun doing it. I will also tell you that this is a slow stitch. This is um, a long laster uh, of a stitch. And so if you start this project, uh, keep in mind, you'll be working on it for a minute. Okay. So I'm just going to pick a color flower and a flower color. Here are some beautiful, this is the um, matte opaque vermilion. I just think it's a great color. And again, I mixed mattes and, and opaques here freely and, and didn't really worry too much about this. Now, one thing to think about here, if this is my um, first daisy and also my last daisy, um, I might want to plan ahead to have one of these beads, these 11th, that's going to be my south bead, be a different color. Because the circle it's going to circle around and I don't necessarily want to million beads side by side. So right, I'm right. actually going to back out of here and throw a blue bead in there just for kicks and giggles and circle these around, leaving enough thread to um, join these guys together. Yep. So, oh, and it's in the wrong position. Perfect. Good job. Good job. Good job. Let's try that again. 
think this is going to be much better. Make it all opposite the um, the center flower bead, and you should be fine. I was in a hurry. Oh, your other color, your, mm. your yep, right. Because this is the effect we want. We want that blue bead at the bottom where it's going to join up. It's going to be the flower bead that comes around and joins itself. And uh, the vermilion beads are going to be this particular daisy, right? Gotcha. Okay. <clears throat> I'm going to grab, let's see, one, two, three more vermilion beads. Oh, I missed a step so sorry i need to circle around here because i'm not coming out of that north bead yet starting again ready to go come around around and we'll go once more around because i missed coming out of that flower center Okay. And you're starting this the exact same way as you did the first one, Emily. Correct? It is exactly the same. Mm -hmm. Exactly. One, two, three. Circle around. Go around again so that I can get my beads secured. And then go around to add my side petals on my flower. Two beads. And it's going to make me circle around again. And two more beads. And then that's the original the original flower. Same, same. Mm -hmm. Here comes the beginning of the petals and the next flower. Oh, maybe I don't want that orange. Maybe I want that guy. Okay. Beginning of the so, next flower. So when you do this multicolor, you kind of have to think three dimensionally in color. And so there's the leaves, the new bead color. Now you're going down to the side leaf and you're going to make that, um, yeah. you're going to make that little extra pointy part. Yep. Circle around. There's one side. And I'm going to continue with this needle and thread it's going to go right up through that flower bead. See it? And work my way over to the other leaf. So that leaf that you're doing, it's kind of like a little mini daisy without a center, right? Yep. It's like a four leaf clover. Right. Right. And four leaf clovers are nothing but leaves anyway. Right. Circle around. And I'm going to pop out. I'm going to pass through that flower bead again. So we can always check that right angle weave is the correct way. If we kind of peel this open a little bit and there's no threads passing across the intersection. So there's threads looping through here, but nothing going straight across. It's super tempting to go straight across, but we want to get that right angle weave to really kind of work for us and stand out. So now I need a purple, a center, another purple. And I'm flowering again. Flowering. Flowering. circling around. You know, and this would be really cute too as like 
I don't know, you could use this decoratively in a lot of ways, I feel like. Like if you've stitched this and you, I don't know, you could sew it onto something. I, it, have, I have the perfect place for it, Kate. Okay. I, I've been a little obsessed with lighting lately. So yes, yes. I've been watching people on the internet <laughs> making lampshades. And I oh know that- gosh, Get out of my head, Emily Miller. Totally. Right. And they're doing these really- extravagant like crescents and all yeah. kinds of crazy yeah, stuff. Oval lampshades that aren't round they're oval yes. and you have all this stuff hanging from them and i kind of want i want more of a classic look but i wanted to have some oomph to it and right. i think in a kid's room um this would be a little girl's room a young lady's room i think this kind of trim on a lamp would just be it would be such a nice little touch um, that it would just be really, really sweet and, yeah. and just charming, you know? Um, 100%. And I think all your teddy bears need a daisy chain. I agreed. I always used to make jewelry for my bears 100%. I liked my bears wearing watches. I oh. don't really know why that was, but I always thought the bears needed to know what time it was. Um, when you have a stopping point, um, sure. I think Janice is asking, will you show that? I think it was the photo. Is that what you're asking, Janice? That multi-stranded oh, yeah. photo? Sure. Just so now I think people can relate to it a little more now that you've shown the stitch. Yeah, absolutely. I don't know where I found that photo either. Um, I may have just Googled Daisy Chain and kind of <laughs> thought, oh, that's interesting. And, and it just had a lot of them in one picture. And I don't, I don't think it was an advertisement. In other words, I don't think it mm -hmm. was a um, something for sale, particularly. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, uh, I don't know. I have another little. I have another little inspo piece to show you as well. Oh yay! Okay. My mom is saying, "Bring back the lampshade guild." You know, here in Fresno, is there a lampshade have, guild? Oh my yes, God. we have a lampshade guild here, and they show at the Fresno County Fair. Um, and I'm not kidding. Uh, and you think beaters are crazy. The lampshaders are, uh, are wild. They're wild. All they right. There's a good little stop point for just a second. Oh, and nice. Look how lovely that is. That's the photo. So look at how pretty Emily. This is right angle weave. And then a, a new pass using, uh, the black beads on the sides. Um, this looks sort of related to right angle weave. And it might be with a different sort of, yeah, it is. So it's right angle weave. Looks like, let me get a pointer. Hold on. My big fat finger out of there. Looks like this is a right angle weave unit. And that's a right angle weave unit. And this is a right angle weave unit. And then they came through and kind of stitched one in the gap. Mm -hmm. So they went around mm -hmm. again. This is interesting because it has a little bit of a zigzag to it. With a little flower leaf kind of hanging out. Um, here's here's basically the same daisy we just did, but um, no, no leaf. Not two beads, a little more rounder. This is right. like a little fairy, right? Uh, on a strand, and then there's that classic daisy, and then another little classic daisy, classic daisy with no space in between, and a daisy with a little bit of space in between. This is more common that I've seen um, where there's a little bit of space in the middle, which I think it's really sweet. It just wasn't what I wanted. I felt it looked too, maybe a little too childlike, but mm -hmm. um, there's another option. So. so you've got a question, Emily. Could sure. this go together like, you know how they have those hexagon quilts or the grandmother's flower quilt? Could you like do mm -hmm. a netting type of thing with this? Could this be joined to this? Mm -hmm. Is that what we're saying? Correct. Um, we could. We'd have to change the daisy just a little bit mm -hmm. um, to make a fabric. Mm -hmm. But it's an interesting thought. That would sure be pretty. It would be. I would think I would want to have something kind of like that where it's offset. Right. Yes. That's, I think, what we're thinking. Right. Rather than it's kind of. You could. I don't, I don't know. This would look sort of interesting, too, where it's 
sort right, of side by side there. Right. But the offset is more like that traditional quilt pattern. Yep. So years ago, and I I I I think that I might have picked these up in Tucson. Um, my mom wore reading glasses. Everybody's mom wore reading glasses, right? And she didn't want to wear um she didn't want to wear them all the time. So she wanted a um an eyeglass leash. Mm -hmm. You know that 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 you've got that in mm -hmm. your uh, screen. So I picked up these in Tucson, I think. And it is a daisy chain. It doesn't read quite daisy enough for my taste, but it is a nice kind of um, solid ribbony effect. And I'd have to pull it apart um, to see the thread path. And I've got I've repaired them multiple times um, by just restitching on the um, little eyeglass leash keepers. And I have multiples of them because there were different ones. So this one has got, it's interesting, some of the details. This one has the flower center is all the same color as the flower. That's kind of an interesting look. Right. And now this one is with a different colored flower center. Um, but it looks like it's the same stitch. Mm -hmm. And not green beads for leaves, but black ones. Mm -hmm. But I thought that this kind of rainbow uh, multiple effect is kind of cool. This looks like it might be two bead on a side, right angle weave, and then another thread bringing in the centerpiece, because that center is the same like that. That might be what that is, two bead on a side. So it has maybe two passes through it, um, which is a little more complicated. Uh, wouldn't be my choice. I'd rather do it all at once rather than have to come back to it. But this is a very, um, just a very a variation on a theme. But don't mm -hmm. they look different? I think they're the same. Count bead count looks the same. Looks like this multicolor one. The beads are a little bit smaller. So keep in mind when you um, when you find something that you know you might find it at a yard sale or the Goodwill or whatever. Uh, Diane Fitzgerald, who's a, a really great uh, bead weaver an authoress, a teacher. Um, she taught herself a number of African stitches by buying a piece of beadwork and then deconstructing it, <laughs> putting it back together again, which I think is incredibly brave. And I don't know that I have the stomach for that, um, but maybe I do. I don't know. This is also not, I think it's woven on something more like fishing line, traditional monofilament that we all think of um, in a, a fishing sort of situation. So mm -hmm. we can trick we could take this all apart, you know, and find out the thread path and just take lots of good pictures of all the stages so that you can put it back together appropriately. And then Mary's saying here in the netting section, could you have the flowers lining up side by side by right angle weaving leaves between in the same way you did in the original? So right angle weaving could i join them i could i could come back through and join this again this would be two stages mm -hmm. this would be sort of like you would in quilting you don't necessarily sew the patch just to the right or left of your original patch together you sew them in strips right and then attach them together right okay right as, that as is correct. Quilter as i am i'm pretty sure it's mostly done in strips that is correct. A lot of times that is true. Um, so you could come back um, with a new needle and thread and wind your way around and circle through there um, by adding an extra north-south green bead in between there to join them together. Although I kind of like this. Yeah, I like that offset. That is very uh, quilt. Feeling. I have a little. I have a dress that my mom sewed me years ago. That's not daisies, but it's white background with flowers on it, um, and sort of linen-y and has rickrack on it and stuff. Right, of course, rickrack trim. Right from the seventies, um, and uh, it's kind of reminiscent of that a little bit. You know, yeah. um, when we put them together, I think it's possible we could do this in one step, uh, in one yeah. build it all at once. But you probably could do it in strips and connect them that yeah, way. Yeah, I mean, it would. it's, you know, just like hand sewing a quilt, mm -hmm. uh, the pieces on a quilt. It's it's a 
it's not a fast process. So how do we then, Emily, go ahead to connect the clasp on? So I did um, uh, my usual, the <clears throat> um, groovy necklace has no clasp. So that's endless. Yeah. And so we just bring it around just the same way we do the ring and connect it. This right. guy I did with a couple of loops. So one thing that you'll notice with clasps, clasps are something to, this is something we do a deep dive on, Kate, um, both uh, manufactured clasps and making your own clasps. Mm -hmm. Clasps usually have two planes. So they have loops going in one direction and loops going in another direction or connectors going in another direction. This one's a little unusual because it doesn't have that difference. Let me grab another class to show you what I mean. Um, let's see if I've got one here that uh, gives me that illustration. Um, and then we'd also like to know, Emily, after you stitch that on or maybe even before, how we would add thread to this piece. Oh, yes, of course. Let me just reach over here and grab a clasp. Uh, sorry, I'm going to rattle around just a minute. That's okay. There's a good one. Oh, that, that container's actually got a few things in it. Perfect. So. Clasps are something that we are always, at least I always, am always kind of collecting. Um, that one needs a little polish, but it's been around the block a few times. And um, where's the ring? I think it's interesting to note some of the kind of the mechanics of clasps. Mm -hmm. You know, um, if we were attaching this clasp to a, a beaded strand or a wire wrap strand, um, our loops would loop through in the up and down plane rather than the flat plane, right? And so with seed beads, it's real visible to have that and it's it doesn't lay flat as much as I might like, but I liked this clasp a lot and I liked the scale of it. Mm -hmm. So um, I chose it for all those reasons. And I, I a magnetic clasp on a bracelet just makes sense. It's just, it just does. So on a, on a traditional clasp, like a lobster claw, or a spring ring clasp. The clasp lays in one plane and the ring or the connector lays in a different one. And the other side lays in the same, right? So right. we've got to have change in between those two. We've got to have one ring going flat and one connector going the other direction to make those clasps <coughs> kind of function. So this one has a ring on the clasp, it's flat. And then it has another ring here. So it gives me a connection in this plane and then that plane. And then when I add a ring to it, because the lobster claws need a ring on the other side. So I have two planes, right? Two going up and down and one across. Right. Same thing with the hook and eye, right? So flat plane versus up and down plane. So clasps are kind of interesting. Like this would have been a good choice for a seed bead, the seed bead piece, because the seed beads would loop through there and lay flat. Um, and either one, any one of these two, because they have those reversal of planes. Just a side, a side um, journey. Sidebar. Sidebar. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Where you were? If we were going to add thread oh, yes. to this, why don't we add some thread and then why don't we just talk about from adding that thread going right into the seed bead loop to attaching the clasp. Sure. Because we've got about 15 minutes left of our day. Oh, you know what? You're going to have to forgive me. I don't know if I have the other clasps right in my hand. Well, well you can connect it to anything, really. Yeah. yeah. So... Um, adding thread for right angle weave and for things like spiral rope, African helix, things that don't have, uh, the thread pattern and the development of a fabric sort of, um, effect seed bead stitches that don't have that fabric effect that develop. I think it's best to tie some knots 
So if I was going to uh, finish this piece off, I'm sorry, if I was gonna add thread to this to finish it off, I would thread up a new needle and thread, pass through a few beads, and then with my needle, just pick up the thread in between the beads. So needle under the thread, pull my thread through and tie a little knot, move to the next, move to a few more beads away, repeat and repeat one more time and then have my new needle and thread coming out where my old thread is. I would leave my old thread hanging, just pretend it's not there, and continue on making a few more daisies. Then I would go back, take my old thread, weave it up through the new daisies and knot off the same way I had when I had started my new thread. Then I can trim off the old thread and the tail of the new thread, and I have my new thread attached. I think one of the things you wanna pay attention to with changing thread and bead weaving is we don't really wanna block up the hole of the bead. Right. So there's gonna be times when you wanna be able to go back and do embellishments on something, so add more stuff to it. Um, there might be a time we have to do a repair. Uh, there might be a time where we're gonna add a clasp and so clogging up the hole with a bunch of knots in one bead is kind of counterproductive. So as well as glue as glue. Yeah. And I don't do glue. Right. Um, I don't either. Bead stuff. Maybe one time out of a hundred, but not yeah. even then. very rarely, very rarely glue glues. It's even with the hypo cement, it tends to kind of get everywhere and it yeah. it's visible and unsightly and kind of all those things. So adding a thread, and this is so appropriate, um, means to take a new needle and thread, weave it in the beadwork, knot it off several times in different spots, continue on, and then take your old thread and weave up into the beadwork, and then knot that one off and clip off the thread. And then you can just go ahead with your new thread. I call that a two needle thread change. And mm -hmm. I find it for me, I developed this and I'll, I will be totally forthright with you. I developed this style because I kept losing my place. I was doing peyote in the right. round and I would end off a thread and then I wouldn't know where the new thread was supposed to go. 100%. And I, would, I would get terribly confused and I would spend a bunch of time trying to figure it out. So leaving the old thread kind of in place while you establish the new one means your new thread comes out of the same spot and you don't ever lose your spot. You know exactly where you're going and you just continue on and then come back and deal with that second thread. Right. Just weave it in. And now it's my, my habit. I don't do it any other way. Would I lose my place now if I sat down to make um, an amulet bag that's 90 beads in a round? Probably not, but this is my habit from here on out. And, and I do the same change with peyote stitch, although I don't use knots. I just weave in my thread, my new thread, have it come right. out where the old thread is and continue on and then weave in the old thread. I also find that it overlaps the threads, right? So if we bring a new thread in down here and move it up, keep going, and then we take our old thread and weave it up and out, then we've overlapped those two ends and there's much more strength and durability I think to your pieces. So if I was going to end this off with a clasp, let me do one more flower round, Kate, okay. and then I'll do a loop for a clasp. Okay, great. I think it's nice to see that flower happening, just the leaves on the flower happening just one more time. And we'll pick a new flower color. <clears throat> and then we'll get that loop built for a clasp. I do think this is a, um, Uh, a great one for necklace and bracelet and rings. So we can do all those. And with a bracelet, we definitely will want to clasp on it. Okay. So I added my beginning of my new flower and two leaves. I'm going to add three more for the full leaf, the fancy leaf. Right. And I'm going to circle around here to get another layer of thread in those beads. I didn't have to. Technically, I could have gone right on, but I know that since they're sticking out a little bit, 
that's going to be much stronger for that extra bit of thread. I'm going to go through this flower bead and then drop down into that leaf bead. My needle is a little bit bent. I've been using this one for a little while and I don't bead very well with bent needles. Some people do, but I know myself that I don't love that bent needle. Uh, I need a straight needle. It's much easier for me to thread a straight needle than a bent one. It's so funny. Yeah, 100%. Agreed. Right? Um, Agreed. That's why I like sharps. Yeah, and uh, sharps are, are the short needle. I yeah. I feel like I have kind of big fingers. <laughs> I feel like yeah. the long needle is a little more helpful. And plus, it's just what I've gotten used to. Um, yeah, exactly. I like sharps for bead embroidery. I think they're super helpful uh, because, again, they are stiff. Um, and they go through the fabric a little bit better, but I, I'm a long bead needle gal most of the time. Oh, I've got to fix the camera view. Sorry, we're working. It came out. Sorry, oh. so we'll go out. There we go. You're looking at me making faces at myself. Perfect. Sorry, probably. Huh. Perfect. I'm just stitching away here at this project too. Are you? Are you doing the same one with the fifteens? No, I am working on a new piece. I'll flash it to you folks when we're ready to go. Oh, I can't wait to see. Yeah, it's been um, it's been an interesting challenge to do these little shorts and and learn about videoing, um, especially kind of one man banding it. Um, <laughs> I wish I had right. one more pair of hands here. I'm going to train the dogs to press. I the feel you. I feel um, that. So the you... sharps will not, Janice, go through the 13s. I think the sharps are a little big. I think sharps are great for 11 knots and larger. Yeah. But I wouldn't use them any smaller than that. So what you're doing, Emily, is you're adding that last flower. Yep. And then we're going to come in and she's going to make that beaded. Yeah. So this is a... Um... This is a point where we could add a leaf or we could go straight to the loop. And it's really mm -hmm. Peter's choice here. Um, I think I would have a leaf here. I would add one more unit. Mm -hmm. I'm dying to use these orange ones because it's one of my favorites. Let's, uh, let's do that. So this might be a place where it would give you a little more room to have the clasp. And I'm just going to go out through that one flower bead. Oh, I probably could have done it just all leaves. Oh, well. You know, I get going along and I'm so hyper-focused on that. I know. So let's choose the ring from this little spring ring clasp. And it's really, this is how you would put any clasp on, folks. It doesn't, Pretty much, yeah. It's not limited to a particular clasp. No, no. And I might like about five or six. Oh, let's do these guys. That's kind of fun. So we can have different ones. We can really choose anything. It's our adventure. Ring. It is. Scoop up that ring. And I would suggest about three passes through these beads. So I'm just bringing my needle through. And with a nice big loop, this is much easier, too. I did about um, six beads here. Six uh, beads for the ending loop and about three passes of thread through those beads. That'll make it sturdy. Mm -hmm. Because that clasp yeah. takes all of the brunt. A lot of the brunt of it. You could do a, um, a uh, wire guardian here, too, if you wanted. Yeah, you certainly could stitch through that. That would Not look nice. Not my favorite look, but you could definitely do it. Yeah, I like them. I know. We 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 agree to disagree on that That's one. That's right. Our paths diverge. Our paths diverge. Um, I don't know why I don't love them. I see a lot of people using them. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just not my favorite. You know. I like the bullion look better. So here I'm going to go ahead and knot off my thread. And I am going to follow my traditional um, right angle weave thread path. So circling around. And I think I'm going to do one more circle here. 
just to get me at a good spot. Sometimes you're going to go through one bead at a time. And looking around my corner of my camera also is also say challenge. Challenge. That's, That's right. Me. Okay. So I'm going to knot off by picking up the thread between the beads. We good with that? How's that? Yeah, great. Right? So I, I slip my needle right under that loop of thread. It's one place where it's okay to split your thread if that happens. Don't worry. Don't fret about it. Tie off a knot. I'm going to go through a couple more beads. Do the same thing. And I learned long ago from my mom, when you're hand sewing or hand stitching and you're making a knot, make the loop of that knot as small as possible before you tie the knot. So when I get my loop made, I don't want to have a giant loop to put my right. eggs. Does that make sense? Because the loop will get caught sometimes and it won't slide closed as easily right. as you might think. So I'm going to slide that loop down to it's pretty small and then put my needle through, right? Much less risky mm -hmm. business. And I'm just going to go through a couple more beads for shucks and grins and pop through here. And I think I'll go through these guys. So I like to move the tail away from where it was knotted. Mm -hmm. and I don't like to have my tail emerge on the end my, or edge of my beadwork. And I like to cut a little under tension. There we go. And Emily is using her Zuron thread snips. That's my favorite. Yeah, for Fireline, you've really got to use something that, 100%. Um, that is strong enough to cut that thread. Um, you know, initially when I started using Fireline, I was using kind of a kid's, a Fisker sort of scissor. Which right. Do a pretty good job. But um, I much prefer these guys. They have a little bit of a serrated edge and they tend to kind of grip the thread a bit. Yeah. They do a really nice job at cutting. Right. Agreed. So there would be one end of my clasp and I would work my way around and do the same on the other side. Yeah. I think that's large enough to fit an 11. And folks, remember, when you're beating your piece, you want to take into account the length of that clasp, because remember, clasps always add length. Yeah, and on a necklace, that amount of length is probably not a big deal. Right, it's not um, as much, but on a bracelet, it can a make bracelet, it a big deal. definitely uh, makes a diff. Yeah. So, and when it's... Oh, go ahead. Yeah. Yep. It really looks pretty. Let's go ahead and show a final uh, final view. So what Emily did here, we used the 11s and the 8-0s. Uh, the needle you used, M was the 13? 12. The 12, sorry about that, with the fire line. Um, and it's all right on beadshop.com. How did we get to an hour and 24 minutes, Kate? I know, it's crazy. It's flown by. Oh, my word. I got so, one last sip of tea. Well, you timed it just perfectly. I did. So uh, I'm going to put you and I on the screen here. Bear with me, of course, right as I'm doing that, my thread tangled. There we go. Let's get that. Let's stop. There we are. Okay. Well, people loved them, Emily. It was really yeah, a yeah. fun a fun project. I can't wait to see what people are going to do with this. I want to flash this at you folks. I've been playing around. I've got some new braids that I want to show you. Ooh, let's see. Some new leather braids. I'm kind of into braiding. I'm going to do a round braid. Nice. This, is a, this is a flat braid. I know that people have wanted to do this kind of peyote stitch with the shadows around. So I just cut myself a leather strip. 
I did some braiding around it. I'm going to do some wrapping here. So the bracelet right around the corner. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So it's going to be half this here and half this braid. So we're right. going to, you're going to see this uh, again. I need to perfect it, but it's coming along. I like um, it. It's good. It's coming along. So everyone's saying, Mary's saying she needs to take seed beads on her camping trip tomorrow. I love that story. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Store them in your little, um, you know, when Cynthia was here, she was really enamored of our little storage and our not so little storage or what here. Yeah, um, they use one million of those. Yeah, they're great. It's great, compact for your trip. Yeah. Um, and people are also saying, uh, Sue is saying she's going to go make some right now, which is awesome. <laughs> um, Carrie's going to have a daisy afternoon. Good. I love that too. That's Excellent. great. Excellent. Well, and you know, this one, this one might be a fun one to um, teach a young person also. Yeah. Um, you know, if you scaled up to eights and sixes, uh, that would make it, make it happen a little bit faster. But mm -hmm. I've been seeing doing these with pony beads and yarn. Yeah, would be um, really fun. Uh, what are those other, what are the little melty beads called, Kate? Um, oh, perler, perler beads. Perler beads. Mm -hmm. You do it with perler beads, it would be super cute and chunky. Mm -hmm. I mean, it would make a cute, chunky bracelet, you know, with right. perler beads. Yeah, it would look nice. And Robin is asking uh, which seed beads are uniform in shape. Uh, everything that we carry, the all the Japanese are pretty uniform, so I don't think you'll have uh, much issue. Yeah, I, you know, um, I like check beads for certain things, and they're mm -hmm. a little bit more donutty shaped. Mm -hmm. These um, Japanese rocals are a rounded cylinder. Yeah. And then the Delica beads are the true cylinder beads, which are like a slice from a pipe. Right. So if you can imagine in your mind, a, like a PVC pipe and you cut a piece very like evenly, that's yeah. what a Delica bead looks like. Yeah. And so they're not going to go around in a circle around the daisy in the same way. It's mm -hmm. not gonna be as um, graceful. A right. As a circle. Yep. So, um, Yep, people are just, I think they're going to jump off and jump over to uh, Oh, good. To beating I, us. Awesome. Really, any flower color would be really fun. And and I just had gotten this all done when I thought, oh, I should have alternated the colors and the petals. <laughs> so <laughs> that's next the time. next thing um, is to do alternating colors, which even if you messed up the pattern a little bit, no one would right. tell. No one still, could tell. Would you know, still work. Can it you would tell still work. It would look really, really charming. Can you tell I'm looking for something? Um, well, yes. you folks are just going to have to. Let me see if it's here. Do you want me to yeah. temporize here while you're looking? No, I, you folks are just going to have to look at it. I flashed it last week, but I may have given it to Cynthia. Um, our new monthly mix, folks, drops tomorrow. It's June 1st. I also have a little bit to catch up on on my temperature project. So uh, jump I in. I dropped my temperature project back in February. Oh, my temperature project, I'm going to, it'll be almost, it'll be five months uh, old. So I'm going to show it to you all on Friday. Um, I am getting... starting a new pay or a new crochet project for myself because I oh, have see? a milestone Perfect. birthday coming up. And I... so I'm going to make myself uh, epic. An Actually. epic one. Well, that's your thing. I love my epic 50th birthday one. I loved it. Um, so friends, tune in on Friday. I'm going to do a, uh, we're going to finish that beautiful hemp piece that I did, the Hemp Bollywood. Janice finished it up. We're going to look at that, uh, look at that finished. I'm also going to flash the uh, temperature project so you folks can see it. And then next week, everyone, it starts our um, our master class, our first week, our master class, and it's going to go on. I don't know as long as it goes on. So we'll see. And thank you. I got some comments. This is one of the pieces that I've made Super in my, cute, in I my saw question about, um, length. So the piece my, I made, this one is, um, tw about 22 inches. Okay. And, um, it used almost nothing of the tubes of colors, but if you're going to do a lot longer, piece um get a second green so you okay. have two, two tubes of green two greens okay 
Great. Well, friends, I will see you all on Friday. Emily, thank you as always. Yes. Emily will be back soon with another project. Absolutely. And we'll see you folks. Don't forget, I didn't flash any of this, so I'm going to flash it now. We just jumped right into it. You can find us on beadshop.com, all of our social at beadshop.com on Insta, Facebook at the bead table and hit that like subscribe and notification button. So you never miss us over on YouTube. And of course you can find all of the information on the project and the products from today's broadcast right on our website. Don't forget to stay tuned for that newsletter for all the latest. Um, and you'll be in connection and in the know. So thanks again. All I'll see you Friday and Emily. Birthday, we'll Gita. see you soon. Happy birthday, Gita. Talk Bye. to you soon. Thanks for watching all.